Today we're going to be discussing a lost history. A very strange world where babies were literally sold as commodities and shipped as mail. Insane, right? What does it say about our past when, just a hundred years ago, people were essentially shopping for infants? And why isn't this widely known? Could it be that this piece of history was deliberately buried or omitted due to its unsettling implications? I mean, did people actually need to mass purchase babies? Was this part of some grand repopulation scheme? Or a migration wave where orphans and young kids were sold and moved westward? We've touched on this topic before. About a year ago, we released a video called Repopulation Postcards and the Cabbage Patch Kids. Our understanding has since evolved and we got our hands on a brand new collection of absolutely draw dropping postcards that we can't wait to share with you. If you missed that earlier video, here's a quick rundown. While researching for our old world Photoshop episode, we stumbled upon a peculiar trend in postcards from the early 1900s. These postcards, dated from 1890 to 1920, are a genre unto themselves and were circulated throughout Europe and the United States. But here's where it gets wild. Not only do these cards feature babies sprouting from cabbages, there are other categories that make it abundantly clear what's going on. It would seem that babies were being sold in baby farms or even baby shops. We're about to unravel a historical enigma that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew about the past. Now that previous video did very well and went viral, but there were some things that we glossed over or didn't fully unpack. This video aims to set the record straight. This topic isn't just about whimsical images of babies and cabbages. Some viewers actually thought we were saying babies were literally grown in cabbages, and a few content creators even accused us of photoshopping the cards to deceive people. The disbelief mainly comes from the fact that many have never encountered these postcards before, but they are very real. And what they suggest isn't just shocking, it could completely upend our understanding of history. Before we dive into our updated collection, let's break this down a bit more because there's a lot to digest. Repopulation? Babies for sale? What are we even talking about? Yes, not only have we expanded our collection of these postcards, but we've also translated them. And now we've gained a clearer understanding of what these cards depict and the messages that they carry. It appears that these postcards were essentially advertisements a way for people to literally select the baby they wanted to purchase shown on the cards. If you're a regular on our channel, you're probably already familiar with the Cabbage Babies category. We covered this extensively in our first Repopulation Postcards video, but that's just scratching the surface. There's another category that might be even more unsettling. We're calling it the Avando Postcards. Avando means for sale in French. While a significant chunk of these postcards are in French, this phenomenon wasn't limited to France. We can say this with certainty because our collection includes American cards with US postage stamps as well as German and Dutch cards. So let's be clear, these postcards depict babies as products, essentially turning them into commodities available for purchase. And that's not just creepy, it's a stark reminder of how different social norms and practices were just a century ago. Alright, well let's start off with a postcard that blatantly shows two babies next to a sign saying Avendu or For Sale. The caption of the top reads, Jean who laughs, Jean who cries. At first glance you might think it's just some quirky vintage humor, but my suspicion? We're looking at something far more insidious. These are actually advertisements. Still skeptical? Check out this next one. Modern Baby Bazaar Free Entrance Trustworthy Establishment Does not fear competition Everything is for sale All you have to do is take We don't accept returns Do you find anything cute about that? The card is literally branding itself as a trustworthy establishment and emphasizes a no return policy Is this trying to point towards something much deeper? Also note the Rex label at the bottom right corner. This indicates one of the studios involved in creating these postcards. 
They weren't the only ones, but it seems they had a role in distributing these cards. There could be a connection to Rex theaters and cinema, although that's not confirmed. Let's examine another card. This one also boldly states, Bebes Avendo. And here, the babies are displayed in baskets, as if they were produce in a grocery store. But it doesn't stop there. A baby is shown growing out of a cabbage, tying this back to the larger theme of repopulation. It's clear that we're not talking about cabbages here, this is about the commodification of human life. Here's another one featuring cabbages being sold. To the left, we see babies sprouting from both cabbages and roses, freshly harvested if you will. On the right, there's a display of babies, each accompanied by a phrase. The card's title? Babies for sale. With them, you will have the greatest of joys. The text on the left of the card states, Your choice. All our babies bring happiness. Then under each baby, there are phrases almost like mini resumes. For example, I will be good. I will not pee in the bed. I am cheerful. I would love you. I will wait for you. I would be nice. It's almost as if each baby is accompanied by a sales pitch, a list of features to help you make your purchase. So we're forced to ask, what's going on here? It's not just an odd historical artifact. These postcards serve as a window into an unsettling era, one that treated the youngest members of society as mere products, complete with selling points and no return policies. Yes, these are babies being sold in a cart. The cabbages are symbolic of them being grown and sold as produce. This card proclaims, The cries of Paris. Here are pretty cabbage heads. Babies, not expensive. Are we to understand that these children were being sold at bargain prices? And let's not ignore the emotional aspect. Many of these children depicted don't look happy. Some even appear to be screaming or visibly terrified. There are also cards showing babies confined in cages, treated like pets or even animals. Where is the humor in that? The card is explicit. Babies for sale. Do you want a baby? The implications are staggering. This isn't just an odd or quirky element of historical ephemera. These postcards are evocative of a time when societal values and norms were disturbingly different from today, to the point where the commodification of children was openly depicted and possibly socially acceptable. So the question is, what does this all mean for our understanding of history and human morality? Because clearly, these aren't just pieces of vintage art. They're windows into a world we can barely comprehend. This next card might just be the most unsettling one. The text is simple, but chilling. For sale. Buy me. I'm bored here. And the background is just as disturbing. An empty street, devoid of any life or activity. The child is bored. But that boredom seems to hint at something far more unsettling. What are we to make of this? An empty street? A bored child for sale? Could this be suggestive of a larger, darker issue at play? Maybe these children weren't just bored. Maybe they were neglected. Or worse trapped in a system that viewed them as goods rather than as human beings. Moving on, here's another depiction of a baby store. Let's break down the text. Child market, beautiful opportunities, choose the cutest, large selection of babies. So a large selection of babies. Once again, note the text at the bottom, Avandu. These babies are for sale. This isn't just some quirky oddball postcard. Now this one's super interesting. This postcard belongs to the multi-babies, water babies category within our collection. This card is unique however because of the writing on the back. It's dated to 1907 from the postmark and was actually sent in the US. The message says, Dear L, don't you think they are very pretty on the other side? If so, Hurry up and order one before they get sold. Love from Aji. So hold up. It's not just a surreal artwork. This person is saying to the receiving end that they need to hurry up and put in an order before they get sold? That's beyond weird. 
and it seems to suggest that this is more than just art, but a way to promote the selling of babies to those in the know. Check this one out. This particular card actually has the baby's names on it. This suggests that these aren't just made up characters, these babies are based on real children. Are we looking at a strange form of Victorian advertising where the artwork actually serves as a catalog for choosing a baby to buy? The caption translates to, I wish you a similar small family, and it features 26 babies on the card. So who are these kids? Are they orphans? Could this be a family portrait? Intriguingly, the ink used for the baby's names matches the ink on the back of the card. So whoever sent this card knew these babies by name. It would seem that this card was sent with the intention of facilitating a purchase. Dated to August 1903, the postcard is addressed to a Mr. and Miss Charlot. It appears to have been sent to a couple. But the big question is, why? And why hasn't this facet of history ever been shared with us? Was this kept secret? This mysterious practice is not an isolated event. It connects to broader topics like the orphan trains, foundling hospitals, and even world fairs. We actually have a postcard that displays these cabbage children as they're on sale, and the back of the card indicates that this was part of an exposition. Just like the other cards, these children have special traits or skills listed, almost like a resume seemingly to entice potential buyers. So, to truly grasp the implications of these mysterious postcards, we need to talk about the first ever narrative film. While there were short films and moving pictures before this, the first narrative movie with an actual storyline was La Fée Chou from 1896. This movie shows a fairy who's not just a magical being, but acts more like a merchant handling multiple parentless children quite abruptly. So much so that it might even be considered abusive today. In a 1902 remake titled Sage Femme de Premier Classe, or Midwife to the Upper Class, the story even gets more disturbing. The children are kept in some sort of reserve where wealthy couples come to shop for them, similar to how one would shop for products. Strangely, live babies are used in the film, crying as they are laid on the ground for their potential parents to examine. This historical context provides vital insight into what these Cabbage Patch postcards might really be. They are not just bizarre artworks of a bygone era, but could actually be a catalog type advertisement for the sale of children. Especially when we consider that these Cabbage Patch kids are being offered up for sale in a context that predates or is contemporary with these early films. We even have a postcard in our collection that's particularly striking in its relief style, something we haven't seen really in any other postcard. But once again, it clearly indicates that the babies in these cabbage patches are up for sale. So, when we connect the dots between the postcards and these early films, the implications are deeply troubling and raise serious ethical questions about practices and values from a century ago. For sure, the struggle to digest this hidden chapter of history is magnified by the simple fact that it was never part of our official education. And yet, the echoes of these practices have lived on through folk tales and nursery stories. The stork delivered the baby, or you were found in a cabbage patch. These cultural explanations for where babies come from might sound innocent enough, but when you dig deeper, they may actually have darker origins. Were these stories merely created as a way to sidestep awkward discussions about reproduction? Or could they be distorted echoes of real, unsettling practices from not-so-distant history? Well, let's take a look at some of these postcards in hand. Okay. Hey, what's up, guys? We just wanted to show you, in person, in hands, our updated repopulation postcard collection. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the Cabbage Patch Babies. These ones are way better than the last time. Super cool, let's not go so fast, hold on. So yeah, we're not gonna go through all the handwriting just yet, but we just wanna quickly go through them. This one is a, um, let's flip it over really quick, let me see this one. Yeah, okay, cool, can I back on? 
It doesn't say Avandul, but yeah, this one's a, an old one. Go ahead, keep going. Let's see. Babies and Cabbages. Does that have a post stamp? Let's see. Mm -hmm. That's 1905. So let's keep going. This one is basically the, the sisters, like the new mother, gathering the baby freshly from the field. You guys have probably seen this one. This is from the last time. Really old looking. Cool. This one's really special because it also has an orphan train. This one I think is Dutch. Parents. Yeah, and the parents. This is 1905, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Yep, this one's crazy. That's one of the, the top ones. Let's keep going. This one's crazy because of the glass top, kind of serving it, presenting it, the cabbages. Let's go ahead. Okay, yeah, this one mm -hmm. is an Avrando um, cabbage patch field, so it's really special. And it's also, let me see if I get it at the right angle. You can see, you turn it around so you can, um, it has a relief. It's super unique. I've never seen any postcard with this kind of style, so really special. And let's see, I don't, oh, whatever. I was trying to guess the year. Can't see it, can't remember. Can't see either. All right, next one. So that's cabbage seed, that's what that says. 23, 1923. Pretty cool, here's one of those photo montages. I love this style. It's pretty crazy. Nothing on the back. This is uh, another cabbage field. Uh, this is the one that I was thinking of. And it's interesting because you'll see the, um, some of the same children reused as stock photos. But this one is special because it's a World Fair postcard. Turn it around. You can see Exposition Internale. So, very special one. And this is another Avando, Babies for Sale. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one. I think we might have two of those, or two that are very similar. This is also kind of like a multi-babies, but still, they're in cabbages. This one's crazy. It's illustrated or painted, but you basically see farm animals with the children, so some symbolism going on there. This one's a monkey. Yeah, that's definitely a monkey. And there's there's like a, I guess like a collection or different versions of this one. The next one is the same thing, of the same style. It's like the same artist. Baby freshly plucked from the fields. Yeah, and this one, Beef. this is the Blanche, yeah. Beautiful writing. This one's weird. I think this was um, 1920 or something. Spanish, turn around. Yeah, this one's in Span 1935. Spanish. 1935, yeah. Mm -hmm. So a later one. Interesting, the red. Is it worth the yeah. emphasis? Baby's getting married. And a cabbage patch. Can you see the year? That's 07, 1907. Mm. So. Got the next batch. And this one is um, at the bottom. I guess we're not going to take it out but um, cause it serves as like a good little base background. But this is a, a really special one because it's like a, basically the most babies of like real photos of babies into one artwork that I've seen. So it's an interesting composite, but anyways. Now we're going to, um, can you get the, okay, you got it. Mm -hmm. So this is the babies and trains category. So let's keep going. So yeah, it's not just cabbages. That's what's so fascinating, 1909. They also have these babies being shipped or transferred on trains. Right. Yeah, boilers, so these are young soldiers. There's a couple more of those that we'll see. Yeah, and this one's, um, we have three of these from different, with different backs, different title text on them. There it is again. Grain, the chow. So that's 
So that's uh, Cabbage Seed 1912. Super interesting. Yeah, this one's weird. Photo montage style. Super, super weird. Okay, so now we're going to go to the next category. And this one is the Multi Babies. There's a lot of these. So. Okay. Yeah, this is interesting. There's a lot of the style with babies and hats. Um, this one's just like your typical, I don't know, hunting or beaver hat or something. But it gets even more interesting because this one seems to depict Phrygian cats. Um, Petite Republic, so they're like socialist babies or being programmed or something. And then you have all this interesting architecture, so that one's super special. What year? Can't make it out clearly, but... So this one is a very interesting one. Probably already brought it up, but um, the names are on the children. And the message basically, basically says, um, I wish you could have a small little family like this. And it's to a couple, so 1903. But let me see those names one more time, mm -hmm. just so we can get, um, no, the other side, the front oh, side. My name. So you can kind of get a, whoever wrote this knew the names. Mm -hmm. Except this one. Well, it's a nickname. I guess so. Okay. So there's actually a lot more of these, but this is the only one that we have in our collection. No, we, we have a couple more eggs, but this there's a lot more of this, like, like a lot of them on a farm, or like kind of like a being incubated. Yeah. This is the babies being delivered. We have uh, two of this one. This one's kind of interesting maybe a higher class of babies or something. Um, they have a nicer little chariot of some sort. Man, I can't get over these. Yeah, the nice calligraphy. Writing. Super cool. Yep, this is um, a baby farm. The farm of babies. Let's see. 1921 is the postmark. Okay, this is the style of babies basically defecating in chamber pots. Um, there's a couple. There's a couple of these. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Let's see. Oh, something. So early 1900s. This is um. They're being transferred in a uh, like a tram, electric. So interesting. 1910. There's the potties one, and then you got mm -hmm. your top hats, of course. This little guy right here. There's a couple oh, of them. Oh, he's on a clock. Yeah. Change. And this is the mushroom style. This one's kind of weird. Um, you won't see it in this one, but the Amanita is going to probably... I think we have one with that. I think these are bullets. Yeah. Oh, there's a writing right here. Oh, sure the, uh, 1905. Oh, uh, multi babies being delivered. So. Babies being hanged, hung on the yeah, telephone. Yeah, there's a couple <laughs> of those. This is um, babies being intoxicated. Very strange. Bizarre smoking, drinking, hookah, 1907. This one to me is my favorite in terms of surrealism because they're kind of like all on the bed and all in this room. But if you look up close, there's also a painting of them in cabbages. So I don't know, it's just kind of weird. Or the chamber pots. Yeah, so that's like four different ones, four different styles right there. There's another one. Mm -hmm. This one's kind of a weird style, babies being um, hanged from uh, power poles, like an energy source or something. Babies being hatched. Um, and yeah, babies being delivered in aircrafts, hot air balloons. Got a lot of those. That's 1908. Another eggs. Being hatched.
Now these are weird. There's a couple different ones of these, but babies basically relying on the milk of a cow. I think 1915, I'm not sure. Oh, we have another one of those. So I, have, I think we have two of those, possibly. Or maybe it's a little, yeah, maybe it's a little different, I'm not sure. This is them working on the fields. Yeah, this is the bell message. I remember this, no, not the bell, sorry, um, the guy on the back who wrote it. Dear Bell, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's what that mm -hmm. was. Interesting. Here's um, the multi-babies hats again. They have a lot of different style of hats. I know mm -hmm. we don't have this on um, the top hat one, but there's, there's one with a bunch of top hats. Like they're all wearing top hats. Babies hanging out on the road. 1905. Okay. okay. We're gonna go to the next one. We'll do the water babies. Oh, these are the stork. Yeah, this is, I, I put them into one group. So yeah, this is the stork water baby category. Let's look at this one for a little bit longer. Go back to the front. Yeah, they're kind of um all grouped up here in one little area. Very strange. They're riding the storks. What about the dove? Yeah. Definitely stork. Cool. Storks teaching the little babies. They have a little classroom. Mm. Kind of the water wheel, the power source type thing. Um, yeah, water babies. 1906. This one is um. This one is a crazy one. I probably already brought it up, but this is the one where, on the back, it's basically saying to hurry up and make an order. Let me see if I can show you. Dear L, don't you think they are very pretty on the other side? So it's basically saying. Says, if, if so, you, hurry up. You want to do it? Yeah. If so, hurry up and make... Oh, actually, now I don't know what it's saying. Order. Oh, yeah. Hurry up and order. Okay, you say it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hurry up and order one before they all get sold. Oh, there we go. Love from Aggie. Interesting. What's the year? Hold on, let me see oh. the year. So, yeah, this is a crazy one. Oh, because, seven, I mean, I don't... Maybe it's a joke, but still... Pretty insane. Water babies landing, possibly a shipment. 1905. Yeah, these are just weird. You really look at the faces. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. fine. Yeah, Let's go to the. Yeah, this one's interesting because it says Stork Magazine, basically kind of like a like a little reserve or the publication. So they're kind of being this is like their classroom where they're being mm -hmm. taught or kept like a little orphanage. Being delivered by storks. Little boats. And they're in nests and trees. Yep. Big nests. Nineteen oh seven. I love this, one. this is the water babies, the water lilies, um, which gets into Charles Kingsley book, um, Kingsley's book, and so yeah, we'll have to break that down in a, in a future video, but gets into some weird symbolism, life, rebirth, hmm. spirits. Oh wait, hold on, sorry. So yeah, this one. Um, I think it's crazy because it could possibly show that the storks are not just um, mailmen or delivery services, but possibly some kind of air transfer in which packages or babies were delivered. So yeah. 1905. And here we have the stork mailman delivering babies. 1906. 
five or six. Yeah. Cool. We got two more categories. It's just a lot of good ones, you know. I want to show them. Okay, so this lady is what we call the red woman, which is also the midwife, um, the lady that you see from the Alice Guy films. She's basically the merchant, the lady that collects the babies and sells them. Yeah, and some of these are just a little creepy. There's one with the fishing hook. Yeah, because some of these I don't think are like the original babies. You can see they kind of just like um, moshed the face on top of the body, which gives it this really weird look. 1906. I think this one was in our old collection, but I just put it in there because, I don't know, she shows up in many different categories. Ooh, I like the back of this one. Yeah, that one's pretty. And the handwriting is so nice. Yeah, so she just stares at the camera while she has a multitude of babies in buckets, pulling them out of the water. Very, very weird. Okay. So we're gonna go through our final category. And this category is called the kids from. Yeah, and this one, I would say this one's probably the most insane one. Cause you have, oh, hold on, don't check, don't, oh, okay. yeah, let me see. You have a bunch of babies being boiled in a cauldron. You have this strange geometry with the uh, tripod. Um, but the weirdest thing is that this is, um, this has this text that's kind of like separate a little bit that says the kids from in a certain location. And that's the category. Um, in this case, it's Whitehall, Michigan. But um, yeah, they have a lot of these which show a large group of children uh, supposedly at a certain location. Or from. Or from a certain location. Mm -hmm. So yeah, in this one, they're all in a pool. This one's Walkerton, Indiana. Let's see the year, 1908. That's what it looks like. And yes, we have this postcard, I brought that up. But at this time, it's from Louisville, New York. Yeah, some of these towns are kind of small, so it's kind of weird that they even have these postcards involving these kids, 1909, I think. Here's one with an orphan train. The kids from Redding, California. Seems to fell off. This one has a hot air balloon. The kids from San Jose, California. And they don't look too happy. <laughs> Nineteen oh nine. San Francisco. Yeah. Mm. This one's weird because it's essentially like a submarine delivering to a lighthouse. I'm not submarine, but yeah, but they're kind of like it's like hidden mm. under the water a little bit. But this one's from Grants Pass, Oregon. U.S. postage stamp, yep. 1908. Michigan. And this one has babies in cages in some kind of circus zoo situation. Let's see, it's from Melvin, Illinois. Yeah, and this message basically says, oh, will you take your journey like these kids in the front? a weird message. So yeah. Here's our last one. I don't know if I already showed this one. I don't think so. But yeah, that's our updated collection. We got one more thing that we want to show, so hold on real quick. Okay. So we're very excited to announce that we wrote our first book. We're really excited about it and we're very proud.
So we just wanted to show you a little bit of it. Um, let's go ahead and take a little peek. Start from the front? Yeah, we'll look at the back. I mean, we really worked really hard on this. We did, we wrote everything ourselves. We designed it. Um, it was kind of like new for us to learn the designer. We used Affinity, so, you know, we're still learning, but overall, I'm, I'm really happy with how it came out. We used uh, KDP, so, you know, this not, might not be like the situation that we're gonna do forever, but I think it's a good first start. You know, you get it faster, it's more accessible. So yeah, you know, we chose Amazon and um, in the future, you know, I might try some other things, but yeah, let's go to the, the first page for a second. I just wanna show a little bit of it. I mean, it's, it's pretty in depth. Um, we really went in on this, so. Really, um, very visual book. We did the premium ink and we just break down this whole subject matter in detail. Um, basically, multiple of the videos that we've done all in one, but with more detail. And it's super interesting. So yeah, we start off with the, the baby incubators Foundling hospitals. Break down the symbolism. You can go a little bit faster. We don't have to go page by page. Okay, okay. There it goes. You want you can just bend it. Yeah, and then we get into the Alice Gee films. We talk about some ancient references. So yeah, give it a little a little scroll, like maybe pick it up a little bit. Pick up the whole book. You know what I mean? Yeah, like little do a little quick here. You know, we break down these postcards, we translated the backs. Um, it's kind of all there, you know? I think it makes for a great little coffee table book. You know, you can go show your friends and have some weird discussions, show yeah. some family, <laughs> see what they think. Definitely a conversation piece. But yeah, you know, this is what we wanna, we wanna kind of push. We wanna do a little bit, um, we wanna do more stuff like this. We wanna, we wanna get better at writing and this is just the first step. So we would really love your support. It would really help us with doing more research and, and doing bigger projects. So if you can, don't feel like you have to or anything, but if you're interested and you want to, you know, support the journey, we would really appreciate if you checked it out. Leave us some feedback for sure. You know, we wanna improve. So tell us, you know, what do you think? whether you liked it or not. And one more thing that I wanted to mention, um, open it to the back. I wanted to show that um, your guys' comments are in here uh, from the video. Yeah. It's a before the gallery. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's basically divided to the front is like in detail, breakdowns and explaining everything. And then in the back you have the gallery, you know? So you can just, you just have exactly what we showed you right there. Um, Here's some of this. your comments. So yeah, I mean, your comment could be in the book. There's a lot of them that we picked. Comments from our video. But anyways, I won't make this too long. But anyway, we're very appreciative of all of you guys. And we're just excited. And thank you so much. So yeah, if you want to dive deeper into this captivating subject, check out our first book where we've put together a beautiful collection of early 1900s postcards, each meticulously organized, scanned, and photographed. You see... These postcards are more than just relics. They're like windows to another time. They give us glimpses into an obscured, perhaps deliberately hidden layer of history that was never a part of our mainstream education. Take the orphan trains, for instance. The prevailing narrative has always framed them as some kind of welfare program. But what if there's more to the story that we've been missing? Similarly, these Avando postcards which mainstream culture often dismisses as quirky or amusing art pieces, take on a new, darker meaning upon closer examination. There's nothing funny about them when you consider the implications. When you factor in the incubators showcased at world fairs, and how Alice Gee was inspired by these displays of premature babies, questions arise. Were these infants merely on display, or were they also up for purchase? Take a look at one postcard where a stork is weighing a baby against a bag of money, symbolizing the infant as a type of tradable asset. 
Well, this history is not well known, which leads us to explore the history behind the Orphan Trains, the first narrative film ever made, and these so-called repopulation postcards. Once you connect the dots, it's evident that these are not just fanciful artworks. They symbolize an actual practice that once took place. So why label them repopulation postcards? Simply put, that's the language used on the cards themselves. They depict the repopulation of civilization through what appears to be baby farming. Other imagery includes a device that generates babies, a repopulation tank where men in top hats are attending to a large red woman in a cabbage patch, and an umbrella of repopulation that also seems to act as a prison for these young children. The symbolism of reseeding operations, cabbage seeds, rose seeds, and even the notion of planting future soldiers is rich and provocative. It raises questions about whether children were distributed into cities with the intent of preparing them for war or other societal roles, as indicated by imagery of babies in boot camps. These postcards seem to present an unambiguous narrative of the sale and distribution of babies. Phrases like, babies for sale, make it difficult to interpret these images as anything other than advertisements for infants as products or produce. Images of storks or delivery men raising children, babies in top hats being groomed for elite society, and disturbing depictions of babies being boiled or set on fire only add to the mystery and darkness behind these postcards. If it's true that our cities are inherited and repopulated after some major event, then the sale and distribution of babies might be a part of a larger operation, perhaps even involving techniques for growing new citizens. Considering that the orphan train movement reportedly relocated over 200,000 children, it begs the question, where did all these children originate? Breaking free from the confines of accepted mainstream history allows us to entertain alternative perspectives, like ancient or Victorian era cloning practices. Far from merely being sold, these postcards hint at babies being actively grown and incubated. This leads us into the arcane and esoteric subject of queen bee goddesses, such as Diana of Ephesus, a figure also symbolically connected to foundling hospitals. The notion of reseeding operations isn't a recent invention of science fiction, but has roots in ancient texts and folklore, suggesting the concept has been entertained for millennia. Given that such transformative knowledge could have been kept hidden, it's plausible that much of this history has been obscured or lost over time. These postcards are far more than just surreal art. They may serve as visual clues to an unsettling and overlooked chapter in history. A chapter where the commodification of infants could have been a widely practiced yet clandestine operation. Unlike most researchers who have examined these cards purely from an artistic lens, Delving into their symbolism within the framework of alternative history and societal resets offers a startling new perspective, one that hints at a large-scale selling of babies as products in the early 20th century. We're excited to hear your thoughts on this subject, especially since our understanding has deepened since we first stumbled upon these Cabbage Baby postcards. We just wanted to say that your continued support and feedback really does inspire us to keep researching and exploring. If you're enjoying the content and would like to see more, we'd love to hear your review of the book and any suggestions for improvement. We're committed to continuously elevating our work and tackling ambitious projects in the future. So thank you once again for being a part of this journey. We got some cool projects coming next that you guys will really enjoy. Thanks for watching and all we can hope is that our minds may be unveiled. Let go of everything you think to be true. Relax the mind and ask the question, do I truly understand what this reality is?